Every big club has down years. Arsenal are currently in their worst stretch since the pre-Wenger days, Real Madrid and Barcelona are far from the level they reached five years ago, and even a resurgent Man United are still eight years on from their last domestic title. But even the tumbles taken by Valencia or Marseille pale in comparison to that of Schalke, who have gone from second place in the Bundesliga to the foot of the table in under three years. The Gelsenkirchen outfit have been so poor that if they won all their remaining fixtures, they'd still be relegated based on last year's table, and their travails on the pitch have been matched by those off it, with players signed and discarded without thought, disciplinary issues abounding, coaches chopped and changed, and a huge financial whirlpool sucking the club inexorably towards the second tier. But just how exactly has it come to this? What mistakes did the club make to turn themselves into a laughing stock? And is there any hope for the future? On this week's EFD Explained, we drilled into one of the worst campaigns in Bundesliga history to get to the root of the rot at Schalke. The first thing we have to do is give you an idea of just how bad this Schalke team is. Of course, in competitive leagues, it's possible for some bad luck and a few key injuries to pitch you into a relegation battle but Schalke's performances are frankly some of the worst the Bundesliga has ever seen. As bad as teams like Newcastle, West Brom and Sheffield United have been this year, all of them look like Champions League sides next to Schalke, who have the worst points tally in the top five leagues, with just 13 at the time of writing. The club went into the current season on the back of a run-in which saw them go 16 games without victory in the league, but fortunately overperformance in the first half of 2019-20 had placed them fifth, meaning that their slide only took them as low as 12th but there was much further to fall. They began the campaign with an 8-0 loss to Bayern Munich and would not taste victory before Christmas, that winless run extending to 30 games before an unexpected 4-0 triumph over Hoffenheim in January. That may have saved them from matching the German record winless streak, set by Tasmania Berlin back in 1966, but it was just Schalke's second win since the turn of 2020. After 28 matches, the Königsblauen had scored just 18 goals, second worst on the continent, and failed to net in 15 of those matches, with their top scorer 20-year-old Matthew Hopp on five, an American promoted from the academy before the season's start and one of the few brightish spots in a dismal campaign. And even that measly tally is with the benefit of luck, the youngster hitting those five goals from under 3xG. Defensively, there's no such sunshine. With six games of the season remaining, Schalke had allowed 71 goals, better only than Italy's Crotone across Europe, and coupled with their appalling attack, that gives them a goal difference of minus 53. For context, that's worse than Newcastle and West Brom's deficits after 31 games put together. Having allowed three or more league goals on 14 occasions to date, Schalke haven't spent a single week outside the relegation zone, and perhaps the only consolation in this gruelling year has been that the fans have not been in the stadium to witness the fall of their once great club. But somehow, the Schalke hierarchy has still found a way to sour their relationship with supporters. Frankly, the horrific football on offer at the Feltins Arena this year is symptomatic of a more fundamental disease at the club. Since 2001, Schalke have been under the control of German billionaire Clemens Tunis, and despite huge revenues, 14th highest in the world just five years ago, his period in charge saw the team steadily amass debt. Tunis himself was a problematic figure, forced to step down for three months in 2019 by the German FA after making comments they deemed racist and in 2020, his reputation somehow took another tumble, this time as conditions in one of his meatpacking plants led to an outbreak of coronavirus. That prompted Tunney's permanent departure, but the damage was already done. Last year, the club reported that they had made a loss of 200 million euros in 2018-19, despite finishing second in the division the previous term, and the crisis only deepened with the advent of coronavirus. At the time of the 2020 lockdown, Schalke had an average weekly attendance of 60,000 fans, seventh in Europe ahead of Arsenal and Liverpool, but that revenue stream disappeared overnight, while the 50 million they had spent in the previous two years had pushed them further into the red and with few assets to show for the outlay. That meant cost-cutting was the order of the day, and marketing director Alexander Jobst grimly declared that the club would have to rethink its sporting goals in the new financial landscape. Annual salaries were capped at 2.5 million euros per player, roughly 48k a week, and the club began to explore the possibility of a new economic structure, changing from 100% member control to a corporate ownership model. At a club founded with socialist principles in a mining community, that didn't go over well, and further missteps followed, as Schalke refused refunds for season ticket holders who couldn't attend games due to the pandemic, 
before laying off low-paid employees to save a few thousand euros a month. In a desperate attempt to stay afloat, Schalke secured a 40 million euro loan from the state government, but it was just a sticking plaster on a bullet wound. And on the football side of things, affairs were just as dire. These days, most clubs bake player trading into their business model, and it's an approach with both risks and rewards. If you're good at it, like Borussia Dortmund, you can cover for a year outside the Champions League or other financial issues by selling stars, leaving you with a weaker squad but some cash to rebuild and no danger of going under. On the other hand, if you do it badly, you can quickly find yourself with a team of depreciating assets and Schalke are firmly in the latter category. Though the academy has produced stars like Leroy Sané, Gundogan, Matip, Tilo Kera, Draxler and Demirbay over the last decade or so, those players have rarely been adequately replaced, and Weston McKennie is the latest prospect to depart for greener pastures, the American ditching Gelsenkirchen for Juventus last summer in a deal which will net Schalke just 23 million euros. And part of this failure in recruitment has been an inability to judge the players they have accurately. Schalke went into the current season betting heavily on youngsters Suat Serdar and Amin Harit, after the pair contributed 17 goals between them last term. But those goals came from just 10 xG, and this year they have a combined 9 goal involvements. Meanwhile, the lack of funds saw the club make a sequence of risky moves. Players like Mark Ute and Ralf Fehrmann, loaned out last season, came back and have played regularly again. The need for goals led to swoops for ancient strikers Klasian Huntela and Ferdinand Ibisevic, who have a combined age of 73, but a combined output of just one league goal this term, with the Bosnian departing after four games. And a panicked January window yielded the signings of Serd Kalazinac and Škodran Mustafi, both commanding hefty wages, and the latter now deemed unlikely to play for the side again after bust-ups behind the scenes. And that's just the playing style. David Wagner was given the full confidence of the board in the summer despite the rocky end to 2019-20 but was sacked two games later, while former Augsburg boss Manuel Baum oversaw just 11 games before receiving his marching orders. Hub Stevens, voted Schalke's coach of the century, couldn't steady the ship either, taking charge of two fixtures. And since then, Christian Gross, who had spent the previous six years in Egyptian and Saudi Arabian football, has also been and gone. Now led by Dimitrios Gromosis in just his second managerial role, Schalke have set a new German record for number of coaches in a single season, having sacked more in 2020-21 than all 20 Premier League teams. Just another unwelcome fact in a campaign which has made history for all the wrong reasons. So where do the Königsblauen go from here? Despite their troubles, Schalke remain one of the best supported clubs in Germany. Only Bayern and Dortmund have more fans across the country, and with 150,000 members, Die Knappen have more supporters invested in them than Barcelona with 145k. So it's possible that when the pandemic is over and the club steals itself for a promotion battle in next year's Bundesliga 2, the fans return and so does the money, enabling the hierarchy to rebuild. The question is whether they have the foundations to do so. One of the many casualties of this season was technical director Michael Reschke, ditched by the side after he tried to sell midfielder Omar Mascare to Hertha Berlin without the permission of the club or the player. And while his departure seems sensible, there is no established recruitment structure in place to fill his boots, like the one which brought Stuttgart back to the Bundesliga in 2020. Anyone promising, like Serdar, Harit or young defender Malik Schau, is sure to be sold, and the roster could quickly become threadbare, with little money for new deals but 23 of the 34 players in the squad seeing their contracts expire this summer or the next. In that context, it's borderline impossible to see how Gromosis or any other coach will be able to succeed. Sadly, it could be a long time before the fourth most decorated side in German history graces the top flight once again. So that's our analysis of Schalke's fall from grace, but which club do you think could follow them? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.